And welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. Today's episode is going to be about Bootstrap 5 version alpha and what is going to be new about it and what bigger changes and small changes are going to be about it. So tune in. And the first thing is that there is a new change on the documentation side. It's more designed to be content oriented instead of looking just like an app. And now we can find everything we are looking for in a more uh, concrete way. Uh, there is the same menu on one, on one side of the site. And now it's actually using the collapse element to actually show us all the content. Alongside the changes on the website for the actual documentation, we also have a new icon for the application for the framework itself. It's um, some sort of... Uh, a B, just like the previous icon before this one. Uh, but as you can see, there is a little bit of decoration on the side to make it appear like um, curly braces. And I think it, it looks pretty good, but uh, aesthetics aside, the most important thing is going to be next. jQuery is going to be removed from the framework and this change comes with um, a grateful letter from the part of the Bootstrap team. Uh, they are very grateful for all the things that jQuery did for the project. Uh, but all things considered, it seems like it's time to just move on with the next thing. Alongside with jQuery, we also, uh, the project is going to leave behind Internet Explorer for good. It seems like uh, Internet Explorer is pretty much dead by now in 2020 and it doesn't seem like many frameworks are trying to actually comply with it although it's one of the main internet explorers out there web browsers may i say uh, the truth is that uh, there is um, not a really big incentive uh, given by microsoft itself to consider internet explorer like uh, an important web browser in the market so I guess that uh, the Bootstrap team is going to focus its attention to Firefox and Google Chrome and maybe everybody else, maybe Safari from the Mac team and Opera and whatever else. Maybe the, the Brave browser is making a strides on the open source side of things alongside Chromium. Uh, the truth is that the Internet Explorer is, is, is dead, it's been long, uh, been waiting for and uh, nobody actually cares about it anymore, I guess. Now, thanks that the team, uh, Bootstrap team has been leaving behind Internet Explorer, uh, they mentioned that they are using custom CSS properties um, and now thanks to leaving behind support for Internet Explorer uh, back in version 4, uh, they were using some root variables for fonts and colors and now they are using them for many other components. For example, the dot table component. Uh, most of these changes are being documented as we are speaking. So uh, read the documentation with the link below so we can get uh, in, be in the know of what changes are going to be. Uh, I guess that the team is going to be using SAS from now on and thanks to custom CSS properties, these teams or even the framework itself if it's going to be even more flexible than before and allow more advanced users not just to use the framework as it is but to customize it in order to achieve success in very specific, um, very specific websites and designs. Improved customizing docs. Well, this is the new thing for us. Uh, many people are wondering, well, what can we do to customize our web apps and our documents on the web? Well, we can make use of the new color system that the Bootstrap team is designing for us. And now we are going to be using something new called contrast. You are going to be able to give your app a that specific and very, uh, very particular look without the need to leave the code base and create your own. We are going to be looking into the 
customizable color palette now. It's a new system and I haven't read it yet, uh, but I've been working with Bootstrap for quite some time now. And I believe that the team is on point. Uh, I'm basically just um, on the vanguard on customizing websites. And I guess that they now recognize the need for web designers to be able to create a specific designs and clearly using contrast and color palettes is going to be a, of great use for those people that want uh, to comply with a specific corporate color palettes and be able to do that without leaving the code base is going to be just great. And the new update and form section on the documentation is going to be great because now uh, creating forms has been uh, for quite a long time uh, a really good need uh, of uh, review from the Bootstrap team and today we're getting news that the form section is going to become a natural section on the Bootstrap documentation page. We are getting a more consolidated views uh, for the forms. Now we are getting uh, a more, uh, we're going to be able to customize forms and make them more appropriate to the look and feel of Bootstrap without the need of using pseudo selectors. This means that with pretty much the same code base from the previous version, from version four, uh, we are going to be able to uh, allow ourselves to build better looking forms and not depend so much on custom CSS to make them look and feel um, pretty much like uh, wholesome in the design of Bootstrap. So thankfully the new documentation is going to help us and those folks that are looking to create simple forms for simple apps and they just want to focus their attention on learning how to create uh, pretty good looking forms without the need to get into CSS and use pseudo selectors or custom classes in order to give the feel and look that they deserve. And the new utilities API is going to be one of the main things for those people that are depending on version 4 utilities to do most of the nitty gritty work. So um, I've been experimenting in, in version 4 with margin and padding utility classes and I have to say that uh, I am probably using them way too much for, for anybody liking, uh, but that's just me. Uh, I'm not using pretty much um, custom classes to create padding between elements because Bootstrap is already giving us those utilities already. So now with the use of SAS and custom CSS variables, we are able to customize the framework beyond the regular uh, CSS uh, creating classes and pseudo selectors. So now we can use these technologies in order to create to create our own uh, utility classes and customize the ones that are already in. And the enhanced grid system is one of the new additions to version five. And the team has been, listen, has been listening to the feedback and the upgrade path from version three to version four uh, is quite a step curve to learn. And they just decided that not move the rack so much and now they just um, may, uh, are implementing little changes here and there. For example, we're getting a new tire for the width of the page and it's called XXL. Uh, and this is going to be great for those people that have ultra wide monitors and wish to be able to use them for their website projects on Bootstrap. Well, I guess that they now can do that. Uh, another thing is that the Gooder classes are being replaced with .g utility classes, pretty much. They are going to be used like uh, the padding and margin classes in version four. And I guess that this is going to be considered like a new utility class anyway. So let's see, but basically gutter is the space in between columns. So you are going to be looking this property as pretty much padding between two or more columns and you can play with this. So that's basically gutter. Um, the next thing is that the form layout options have been replaced 
with a new grid system. So I guess that the new moves is that to implement uh, the grid system as this wholesome way to organize everything, including forms. And we all know that we like to be more uh, specific in where to place form elements and input data elements. Uh, but the truth is that uh, implementing a grid system and using it on form it comes pretty natural anyway. So I guess that this is a very, um, very great move from the bootstrap team to move the form system uh, into the grid system and manage the distribution of the forms this way. And to finish up, uh, vertical spacing classes have been added and columns are no longer positioned relative by default. So we need to take care of those special cases where we are uh, overwriting the display properties on various elements. And if you are one of those people that decide to insert display, the, the, the D class uh, every, every way you can, well, uh, you need to put attention on that. So uh, pretty much, I guess this change has to do something with uh, the fact that uh, most elements are going to be in flex, display flex by default uh, and using Flexbox by default. Uh, I'm not sure I should be reading the documentation now. Um, basically talking about documentation, uh, the new documentation website is going to be improving. It's going to be using the elements of the Bootstrap framework and hopefully uh, a lot of the ambiguity on the source code and the examples is going to be gone. Um, I would like to see um, examples that I can basically just copy and paste into my favorite uh, text editor Visual Studio Code and just uh, try it out. Probably I'm not going to be asking the entire HTML header and, and, and the head element, uh, but I may like to see at least the, the body and the closing body tag and the example right there that I can actually copy and paste. It's been more than one time that I've been copy and pasting code from the documentation side and more likely than not, those examples are not running and I need to put a special attention and pretty much I need to invest a lot of time and effort in order for me to make the examples work as intended. And I think that uh, improving that aspect of the documentation, if not already been upgraded already, um, will be a great step moving forward. So that's all I had to talk about Bootstrap 5 Alpha. Uh, I haven't installed that yet, but I'm going to be developing that tomorrow morning uh, when I get relief from, the, from my janitor and watchman duties today. And I hope to see you on my YouTube channel. Uh, um, I am currently uploading these episodes on my personal channel name, Jorge Escobar. You can find me at Twitter as Jorge Escobar. And I am uploading this episode as a podcast episode at Anchor. You can find my podcast is called Learn to Code. I leave in the links for all of this on the description of this video, as long as a link to the description of the Bootstrap framework and the documentation for Bootstrap version five, alongside with everything else. If you are listening to this on your podcast device, if you are listening to this on iTunes or on Podcast Cast, Spotify or Stitcher, whatever app, uh, I suggest you to take a look into the show notes. I leave in the links for my YouTube channel, my Twitter account there, as long as the documentation of Bootstrap 5 Alpha and the webpage. And probably uh, I am including a tutorial about how to actually create your first Bootstrap project with Bootstrap 5 Alpha. So thank you for coming in and goodbye.